Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel called Susanna Reacts where I learn all things parad with your help and I share uh, just my point of view as someone from Slovakia which is in Central Europe and today I'm um, actually super excited because we're going to explore spirituality but um, yeah, many of you uh, have suggested that the psychology is not really a thing. Uh, spirituality is more so a thing in India. Um, but um, and this is about apparently um, uh, the kind of Hindu trinity of gods and how traces of uh, that can be found in actual western psychology so carl jung is one of uh, a very famous um psychologist and uh, um the video apparently tends to discuss uh, how maybe his psychology and i think it's interesting to think about it like how maybe western psychology is actually influenced by uh, spirituality by vedantic traditions by upanishadas from india so i'm super curious to explore that video with you but before we get into today's video please like this video and click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification thank you so much for your support so i say let's hit it brahma vishnu and shiva now this hindu trinity is one of the greatest enduring iconographies in world religion Common narratives concerning its symbology today will speak about how it represents the cosmic functions of creation, maintenance, and destruction. And this is nothing new. Gods and demons have been known to be nothing more than representational images for the divine unknown. Their idols and temples were grand totems to be used during our prayers and meditation. This has been the discourse adopted by many rationalists since the dawn of Western enlightenment. That was until Austrian psychologist Carl Jung came along and changed the way we looked at religious symbology. When we internalized Jung's findings, we found a darker psychological narrative at play behind the iconography of the Hindu Trimurti. Carl Jung and his predecessor Sigmund Freud are widely credited with changing the fields of analytical psychology and psychotherapy. While Sigmund Freud captured the imagination of public with his radical theses, Carl Jung's influence was a bit more subtle. This is mainly because Carl Jung's ideas are hard to understand. Now, Jung did some profound work in the understanding of religion and how psychology interacts with its culture. This connection made by Carl Jung broke new ground in psychoanalytics and culture studies, and some experts call this new field of study as psychotheology. In his essay, Aspects of Libido, Carl Jung explains how individuals perceive the psychotheological dimension of their being. Not many people understand or appreciate the magnitude of what Carl Jung was trying to hint here. Carl Jung believed that religious and cultural myths and legends had solid psychological basis to them. Gods and goddesses, rakshas, all of them are basically products of mind. They are psychological entities that help the individual cope with the dominant reality of the world. Mythic lore is what captures the imagination of all citizens of the larger culture. As their minds gain a unifying common orientation, the entire culture now acts as a grand singular mind. This is how our cultures help us reconcile our psychotheological morality. This is how different cultures find meaning and purpose behind their beliefs and value orientation. The civilizational culture then champions the use of grand motifs and grand narratives like the Hindu Trimurti to remind the individuals about their place in the world and most importantly, their place in their own minds. Jung was heavily influenced by Vedantic philosophies of the Upanishads. This probably influenced him in his thesis in which he declares that the ultimate psychological aim of the individual is to complete oneself. This process is called individuation. In the words of Carl Jung himself, individuation means becoming single homogeneous being. It also implies becoming one's own self. We could therefore translate individuation as self-realization. But this self-realization comes at a cost. One has to understand oneself and that's painful. The process helps us derive meaning in life. This helps us cope with suffering. Our persona it's merely a projection to the real world of what mind contains. And the mind contains the following. 
ego this is the conscious aspect of the mind shadow this is the unconscious aspect of the mind which is repressed often times this involves a darker side which the ego is afraid of and the persona is ashamed of the shadow need not always be negative though it can be positive but ego might still repress it out of fear or inertia anima this is the collective unconscious aspect of mind as it coexists with the other minds in a culture these generally store repressed memories of a culture or grand symbols which are manifested in each individual's mind this lends meaning and purpose to individual's life and more importantly it comforts it by reinforcing a sense of belonging this gives it identity the manifestation of these symbols and motifs their intensity and their effects on each individual's life depend on the individual's capacity of psychic energy but what do these different layers of mind have to do with trimurti how does this affect each and every believer in shaping their psychotheological being we believe that the mythic legend behind the hindu trimurti is a psychic projection of the hindu dharmic mind it is a culmination of the dharmic mind's process of individuation in which all these adherents must aspire towards a unified culture the essence is vedantic just look at the imagery behind the hindu trinity you will see a projection of how each god stands for three aspects of the mind as explained by carl jung the ego the anima and the shadow vishnu is the caretaker god he can be associated with the ego as the conscious aspect of mind If you pay close attention to some of the myths and legends of Vishnu you will find that he is a householder god he is a god of this world who is responsible for his preservation just like the ego represents consciousness and roots the mind to its place in the dominant culture and the larger world Brahma is the creator god he can be associated with the anima as the collective unconscious aspect of mind If you pay close attention to some of the myths and legends of Brahma you will find that he is not worshiped by anyone he is unattainable just like how a mind can never fully engage with the entirety of collective unconsciousness it will always be a subset of its culture the creator god represents knowledge just like how a mind retains learning from information it receives from a dominant culture and shiva shiva is the destroyer god he can be associated with the shadow as the unconscious aspect of the mind considered as the manifestation of the rigvedic deity rudra shiva is a god who is feared as much as he is venerated the narratives revolving around his myths are diverse shiva has always had this mystical quality about him although shiva has been shown in the householder of the grahaspati avatar he is commonly associated with the depictions in which he is terrible fierce and full of rage His Tandva is literally the dance of death. If you pay close attention to some of the myths and legends of Shiva, you will find that the reason he is worshipped by a majority of Hindus could be because of a culture's inherent fear of annihilation. This is where it gets interesting. Shiva's shadow aspect of the mind is a contentious topic. The shadow self is generally considered a taboo side of the individual's persona. It is never projected. That's because the ego represses the darker side from a world so that the persona may gain wider acceptance in the social hierarchies and dominant cultures. We as individuals are never at ease with our darker repressed selves. We are not comfortable with our own capacity for nether passions like violence and other vices. But this is not healthy according to Carl Jung. The process of individuation demands that ego expands and integrates the shadow itself. We must be capable of mayhem. We must know the scope of evil contained in our shadow selves. We must know how to wield our swords, but we must keep it sheathed and visible at all times. So embrace your darker side and try to internalize Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva in you in all totality. Who knows? You might actually find yourself. I believe this is it to the video. It is very interesting and it's very fascinating for me for a number of reasons um since i've started this channel and i've been looking more into it and as you um know for me uh the key interest i think in india is really stems from spirituality and the more i'm learning about it with you guys um the more i feel like i'm discovering that there is a lot of 
Western spirituality, if you like, um, but not excluded, you know, like I'm not saying all. Uh, obviously, you have different cultures in the West. They have different traditions, uh, which I feel like across the board um, talk about very similar things. Um, but it does feel like a, a lot of concepts are rooted, especially in uh, kind of Hindu uh, traditions. And it's it's fascinating. It's fascinating how he is linking it to Carl Jung. Um, and uh, the three aspects. Now, when it comes to, it's interesting because I'm actually right now doing some work when it comes to the shadows and 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 um, I'll a program on this. Uh, so it's actually fascinating that I that this video, uh, interestingly, right? Like, are there accidents in life? I don't know. I guess they're not. Uh, it talks about these things and. Um, you know, in, in other philosophies, there, there are concepts of collective consciousness that, you know, each kind of nation has their bigger collective consciousness. So, um, um, but I think more when it comes to shadows, what he says um, is, uh, I know that you guys, when it comes to psychology, you don't really rate it, but maybe there is a food for thought to reconsider on, on what kind of basis there are certain concepts and things thought of. And obviously in the West, I think uh, when you're studying the mind, um, you are uh, talking to people from a rational if you, if you like perspective, although you know you've uh, conscious, subconscious, etc., everyone's uh, aware of that. Um, so I, 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 it's maybe a food for thought, not to disregard uh, psychology altogether because it might have uh, an interesting origin uh, and a way of looking at it. And uh, he says that his um, concepts were maybe hard to or not spoken about, hard to accept or whatever, because. I really like that one part where he talks about that uh, the, the journey to self-realization is painful because it is. And I think that the painful part of that is coming to terms with your own shadow. So the way the shadows are discussed in this part of the world is really, just to give you an idea, if you are not when you're suppressing parts of yourself because it's culturally unacceptable or it's unacceptable in the family, perhaps it's unacceptable in your family to speak up and, and share your opinion because you believe, and again, like I'm, I'm using the word beliefs because that's where kind of some of our beliefs and what we believe in, um, is that you will suppress it within yourself because um, it's bad. However, it will come up in other areas of your life. I've actually been doing work even on myself and I've been really detail like detail focused on myself. And um, sometimes the things we repress, they really do come out. It, in this particular example, I want to give you that is just for your illustration is that if you've been a repressed culture for speaking up or let's say being a nice person and you're not able to express your through authentic selves, uh, which is like sometimes being rude, sometimes just really, I don't know, showing anger, etc. Then you will, you might exude qualities of passive aggressiveness. Let's say if you are, and, and that's not good for you and that's not healthy, but it stems from that suppressed belief that you should always be nice to people, you shouldn't talk back, you shouldn't show anger. And then it actually harms the person. Uh, and, you know, similarly, let's say if you feel like you're not worthy, this will, this will show through different areas of your life. It will be maybe you always need to take the most difficult job. Maybe you, can, you will have a partner that doesn't feel like they're worthy of you. So um, this is why it's so important to really come to terms with that. And it, as, the, as he says, it's a painful process. And I've been on self discovery help journey for like last 20 years um so you always think that you've discovered something and you work through it um but there's always like another mountain to climb and um with the, the specific shadows at least for me personally when i'm doing work on myself it's it's actually really hard um and it it, it does feel painful um but i am all about 
growth and development and and, and getting better uh, because when when you are able then to figure out where your challenges are coming from and where they stem from you're able to re-own them and you are able to watch yourself in those situations and you're able to have a better outcomes for you because you're able to respond better to yourself and i think it's always important at least for me as just to become you know i i almost don't believe and i said it to everyone i know i don't believe it's important to re in a way recognize who you are i think it's important to recognize who you want to be so the question is who do you want to be what kind of person do you want to be and work towards that i said in other videos um you know no one is inherently good or bad we're mixtures of both this is the reality if we are going down the spiritual route uh you know he said uh, showed that in the video yin yang you because the this 3d world is about balance if you had nothing to work on you would not incarnate on this planet you would be incarnating another star systems or whatever if we are wanting to go that far but you cannot have good without bad it is just polarities right light and day we work on polarities in this world therefore it's impossible um unless you're some real evolved rishi what what have you um to you know uh to to kind of approach it from from that angle and i think it's okay i think it's okay because we come here to learn to grow and to become ultimately uh, better people and um i find it fascinating that some of psychology western psychology is actually uh comes from spirituality and from you know people studying old indian scriptures i i think it's it's pretty pretty great what do you guys think about it i, I would love to know like how do you feel about you know discovering these kind of connections between india and western psychology and i would really love to know because i sometimes ask that sometimes to, it, you know um the questions get unanswered like I, I would love to know your point of view and psychology especially in the light of uh, this video and how it connects uh, uh in the comments below and with that being said thank you so much for watching this video with me if you did enjoy it please give a thumbs up share a like and subscribe to this channel and i will see you in the next one until then do take care sending lots of love and peace Bye bye